What's up? Um, so today I want to talk about Monero's friction points. Pretty much what I want to cover is what prevents people from using Monero, why is that, and what can we do as a community to make that better for people so we can have more people using Monero, or at the very least just being more private with their financial transactions. So my name is Henry, I'm the owner of TechBlur. We make content covering privacy and security, and our goal is to spread privacy to the masses via content and educational tools. We have a couple open source projects, and we also manage communities so people can learn how to be private, and we try to keep it as simple as possible for people. So I want to talk about movements. Um, this is going to be kind of similar to Nate's talk a little bit, just to start with, in that movements are very, very challenging. It requires dozens, hundreds, thousands, if not millions of people all organized by strong central leaders. It requires a ton of organization. It requires a good cause, and it requires a lot of strategies that many of which aren't proven to work and some are proven to work. And you can even argue how successful some of these movements truly are almost 100 years later. So movements are a very difficult thing to accomplish, and it's worth acknowledging that movements all have friction points which is what I want to really talk about today, especially with Monero, and I want to tie this to the movement of Monero, which I think most people can agree on, is going to be financial privacy and financial independence for a lot of people, which I think is the general movement. So I think everyone should just reflect on this. This isn't something I want you to stop right now and think about, but why are movements challenging? And I want you to just think about friction points of movements um, for the issues that you're passionate about, even if it's not Monero. Think about the things you care about day to day, if it's uh, environmental causes, if it's anything like that, and see what are the friction points and try to tie that mentality over to the Monero world. And you might be asking, how do we know there's friction points of Monero? I want to use a very basic stat. This isn't something super scientific, but if we just look at the number of people that use Monero, it's relatively low. We're seeing around 30,000 transactions a day, um, and just for context, the Disney World gets a lot more people than that in a single day. And then we see Bitcoin transactions are even higher than that by almost tenfold. And then we compare that to just the Bank of Portugal's estimates on a single day, and we have almost eight and a half million transactions. And if we compare that to global visa transactions, we're talking about 515 million transactions. And so when you break all the numbers down, we're kind of nothing. Right? Like in the scheme of a global perspective of things. And so how do we take this and make it something that people use? How do you get your friends and family to use Monero? And I really want to ask also, should we do better? Because before we decide we want to make this a global tool, does Monero need to be a tool that everyone uses? And I think it's very valid to be on both sides of the coin here. You can think that Monero is a tool for activists and people who need privacy just when they need it. Or you can think that Monero and the philosophies behind Monero should just be the default for everyone out there. But I think you should find your individual answer on where you think Monero fits into people's lives. But the cool thing is, regardless of what you think there, both answers benefit from reduced friction points of Monero. Whether or not you think Monero is a, an isolated tool used for activists, criminals, or anything else that really requires privacy, or you think it's a tool that everyone should have access to and should be easy to use, the friction points are still important to focus on. And so let's talk about Monero's friction points and what they are. And I'm going to keep this not as technical. This is going to be one of the less technical things because we know what the technical limitations are of Monero, but we don't talk about some of the other stuff that holds people back from using it. So let's start with the technical friction points. You're going to find a lot of conversations around the Monero community and the development of Monero that revolve around things like the 10 blocks lock, two minute block times, anything else that makes Monero faster to use and works behind the scenes for people, things that people won't pay attention to or notice. And I think, generally speaking, Monero does an excellent job with this. I think there are very valid limitations, but this doesn't seem to be the big reason people don't use it. If you go to someone in the streets of Lisbon and ask them, do you use Monero? They're not gonna tell you, I would use it if it wasn't for the 10 blocks lock. That's not what people are saying. And so let's go to the usage friction points, which is kind of the second thing I want to touch on. So the technical points most people acknowledge and are very objective. So it's easy for us to compare them and see improvements and make progress. And a lot of us are efficiency freaks. And so we want code to be as good as possible and work as fast as possible. But usage is a little hard to reflect on. So first, I want to talk about intuitive UI and UX. So this is going to be the wallets you use, how you interact with Monero, the tool itself. 
how is someone like your mother, your grandma, your friends, your family, how do they actually use Monero? Is it something they can understand? Is it something you have to explain to them? Do they have to dedicate time and energy to learn and understand this concept? This is a friction point for a lot of people. Obtaining Monero is a huge friction point. I actually start that one because you have to know how to use local Monero if you want to avoid KYC or another service that allows you to, to purchase Monero KYC free. Or you have to know how to convert things from different currencies. There's no way you can just go to a local store. I mean, there are some local um, Monero ATMs, which are fantastic and I think are a great step forward here. But a lot of people don't even know that. A lot of people just sign up for Coinbase, maybe thinking they can buy Monero on it, and then they find Coinbase's blog telling you how to buy Monero, which is just don't use Coinbase. Um, and so it's very hard to obtain Monero in a safe way. Um, and I do want to emphasize safe because you can obtain Monero relatively easily in an unsafe manner. And there's also the complexity of cryptocurrencies and just technology in general. Um, we deal with people every day who don't know the difference between a web browser and a search engine. Very things that to us might seem more basic, but a lot of people just don't understand technology on a fundamental level. And I think cryptocurrencies and blockchain and all of these projects are like one step above even just how basic technology works. And so we have to just keep in mind that we're working with some very advanced software here. Even if we polish it and we make the UI and UX intuitive, even if we make obtaining it intuitive, the complexity of the tool isn't easy to understand for a lot of people. What's a private key? What's a seed? What's a public key? Why should people care about that? And so we need to just keep in mind that the whole concept of Monero is complex in itself for a lot of people. And then we have societal friction points. These are things that are very broad, that are kind of hard to target, and you can probably find a dozen more, but I'm going to cover some of the main ones I thought of. So there's the desire for the use case. The use case for Monero in my opinion, this might be a different answer for everyone, is privacy. People use Monero because they want privacy. Lots of the world doesn't value privacy. So right there, why are people going to use Monero if they don't even understand the use case for Monero? They have to first understand why privacy is important, then they have to understand why there is a current problem, and then they have to understand what the solution is. So there's a multi-step process for people to even understand why to use Monero. The good thing about this one is it's only going to get better as things get worse. Which I don't like to say, but as governments continue to crack down on different demographics and we start seeing more protests come out and we start seeing people get tracked in these protests and we start seeing privacy just become a hotter topic in the world, people are naturally going to stumble onto projects like Monero because they'll finally see the use case. People don't care about privacy until it impacts them. Up next is regulation and policies, and I think everyone knows this one pretty well. Some of these are very direct. Countries who ban the use of Monero. That's pretty direct. It makes it very hard to enter into the Monero space without putting a giant target on your back. There's also more subtle things, though, like how complex taxes can be if you choose to pay taxes on Monero, which I know is a hot topic here, so I'll leave that all to you. Um, and there's also more subtle policies as well with Monero um, that just could be complex for people. There's also knowledge, which kind of ties again into the complexity of the tool. So it's just a general understanding of technology on a societal level and how well people are educated in using the tool, understanding its shortcomings, understanding how to use it properly, understanding what not to do, how to avoid phishing scams. There's that whole general societal issue, which is that people don't really understand technology on a very basic level. Um, and this is kind of a consequence of um, tech companies making such fantastic software that doesn't require people to understand how it works. Um, we also have the Monero image, which I think is the double-edged sword, which is, it works for criminals. Which everyone here is like, fantastic. That means this tool works. People trust this tool for what they do. But journalists, governments, normal people might see that as a con. They might see that as, well, I don't want to associate with criminals. I don't want to feed into this black market. They don't understand the technology. They don't understand how there's a positive side to that. So I do think the image can get in the way of Monero as well. And I think it's important to acknowledge that you criminals using it is just proof of the technology and not proof of the use case. Low bandwidth, um, not to get too philosophical here, but people, especially, I'm from the States, so people in the US don't have much time in their lives. Um, you work a nine to five job, you come back, many countries are like this as well, and you can't expect people to dedicate time and energy 
into learning this whole new cryptocurrency unless it's something that actually impacts them is now a priority in their life. People have families, they have lives. Um, and so I do think there, there are a lot of things that we just can't do in our lives just because of time and energy restrictions. And so we do need to keep that in mind too. And finally, adoption. I think Monero adoption would be exponential. The more people use it, the more people are aware of it, the more trustworthy it is, and the more that things will scale. So I think that the more that we see adoption rise and every single person that you can get to use Monero can be an exponential difference. And then I also wanna cover the minimal friction points, which is pretty much what does Monero do well? What are things that are not friction points that make Monero just a great tool? First, privacy has no extra friction points for the most part. You might have to go, if you want to avoid KYC, then that I guess would be an extra friction point, but just sending a transaction to someone doesn't have any additional friction points. So having privacy have the same friction point as just having Monero is a, an amazing selling point that you just don't get with things like Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. The community is also fantastic. If anyone has any questions about Monero here and you ask any of the more technical people here about Monero, they will more than happy, they will be more than happy to help you on that journey. It's one of the best communities out there. Um, I'm not someone who's super invested in the crypto world. I just like Monero for the privacy aspects of things. And I will tell you, it's a fantastic community. Societal support. So many things are funded by the Monero community to make Monero even better for everyone else. Monero does so much to make this a more accessible tool for society. They support art, they support things like this conference. They do so many things to make Monero as accessible as possible. And so the societal support that's already going on in the Monero community is fantastic. And also technical stuff. I mentioned this earlier. We are very technical. We like to make this as efficient, as fast, as good as possible. And so I think we already have a lot of that covered. We're just kind of missing the end user the side of things if our goal is to make this a more global tool, which again is up to you. And so I have some core takeaways here. And I did not memorize this. So we've only made progress. And I think progress will only continue. I think we're always focusing on this, even if it's indirect. I think that just doing what we've already been doing is only going to lead to more improvements. And so I think we're on the right path. With that said, I think that continuing to focus on reducing those friction points that I covered goes well beyond technical improvements. And I think that we should think about usage and how you just showing up here today already makes Monero easier for other people. You just being here, interacting with people, having a community around this, Posting about this, if you're on any social media that you went to this, normalizing Monero, these all reduce Monero's friction points. It doesn't seem like it does because you're not contributing to the code, but you are reducing friction points. And so I want to ask everyone here how you can self-evaluate what you do in your life and how you can directly help with Monero's friction points and make it a more global tool for other people. Every profession that you're a part of, every hobby, anything that you do in your life can be made to support Monero in some way, shape, or form, even if it's just accepting Monero on the side for tips or something. That supports everything. And that's it for today. It's more of just something to make you think about how you interact with Monero, and I hope that it was useful for everyone, and it helps Monero grow a little bit more, even if it's just one person.